<clears throat> okay, we're gonna retry this. And I will I'll try to I'll try to keep it stabilized. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Is that a level? I'll try to keep this stabilized. We might get interrupted by uh, my, my rooster. He doesn't seem too happy. That's, he's not down here. Those are four hens that are looking for worms. <clears throat> That's him. Okay. Well, now I'm on my 5G connection, so this, this should work for a while. So, lesson learned. Oh my god. Well, it's not Sprint. It's my Wi-Fi. Um, I have a thing called radio. <clears throat> it's called radio Wi-Fi. You see that antenna right there? That has a, uh, it has a receiver. It's basically a, a giant Wi-Fi. Um, it's from a company called Antelecom um, here, and they, they shoot a, a, basically a very directional Wi-Fi signal from way, way off to the uh, southwest, and it goes to a repeater Ooh, me. that is right there by, uh, by my neighbor. <clears throat> Am I still up? Are we on? Are we doing this? Uh, okay. So anyway, the New York Times reporter, uh, Rukmini Kalamachi, her bottom line, if you read that thread, um, is that uh, ISIS uh, have been known to falsely claim attacks that were not theirs, but not often, only three times in 50 attacks. And then um, in, in other attacks um, that were ISIS inspired, they didn't even claim credit. They just sort of assumed that uh, we would figure out that they were ISIS attacks. So, so uh, um, it's disturbing that their weekly newsletter, NABA, would, uh, would claim this. Um, and they might do it just to disrupt uh, our, you know, normal security functions here, uh, just, to, just to cause a, a controversy in the American media. Because that was one of the things that they were claiming um, was that they have thrown the American security apparatus into disarray. And uh, th that's not exactly true because they haven't claimed, or rather Las Vegas PD and no federal authorities have leaked anything about ISIS. Now, the arguments for it being a ISIS-inspired attack whew, are that he was shooting video. He was um, Does it keep buffering? Um, that he was shooting video of the attack, and that's something that ISIS tells its attackers to do, is to um, shoot as much video as possible so that and then if you can, to live stream it. So here's the thing. Here is one piece of, uh, of positive proof that if ISIS really truly, uh, if this guy really truly was a convert and was, um, was a ISIS-inspired uh, guy, then he should have uploaded, live uploaded video, just like I'm doing, okay? Even if it buffered or whatever the fuck happened. Um, he, uh, there you go, there's an airplane. Um, is that even if, uh, he, if he was a ISIS guy, then he should have been live streaming some of this to ISIS. But if he was just taping it and putting it on a card, Vegas PD and the FBI and the rest might say, oh, well, he was just taping it. Well, American serial killers don't do that. Okay, Adam Lanza... And, um, and all that, uh, they, they don't do that. No one's done that. And for what purpose would he be doing a mass killing and then, plan, and then evidently planning to get away? He had a oh shit plan to kill himself, obviously, 
but what would he be videotaping this for? So um, I don't I don't think there was two shooters. I don't th believe in conspiracies, but but I will say this: I am not yet convinced that he was not actually ISIS inspired. Now, why would a 64 year old guy convert to Islam? I don't know. Um, I I don't know, but I, I will tell you this, and and I'll defend this any day of the week. Anyone who converts to Islam as an adult has a mental illness. Period. Any, especially any American. I understand why some dipshit 16-year-old like Adam Gadon in Orange County or John Walker Lind in Marin County, I understand why some teenager converts to Islam so that he stands out in the, uh, in the, in the school, in the high school, and the whole thing. I get that. But um, anybody who later in life converts to Islam... Um, has a mental illness. Just like, um, to be honest with you, people who grew up religious and then they become atheists, like, um, uh, I'm trying to come up with a name, but I, I can't, but they, they tend to go overboard on their atheism and they tend to get offended at every fucking Christmas tree. Those of us, like me, who have never been religious, we don't go around evangelizing atheism, okay? We just kind of understand that we live in this world and that we shut up and we get along. I am not offended by a um, <clears throat> by a menorah or a Christmas tree or whatever. Okay, but when someone who grew up Catholic suddenly becomes atheist, you cannot shut them the fuck up. Or when someone converts late in life to like becoming a Mormon, um, like Glenn Beck, you cannot get them to shut the fuck up. Glenn Beck always makes a big point of drinking water on stage out of a water um, bottle. Uh, because if he had water in a glass, people might think it was vodka. I'm not making this shit up. If people saw ice water in a glass on stage, they might think he was drinking, you know, fucking gin or something. <laughs> like, who gives a shit? If you're really genuine in your conversion, then you shouldn't give a shit, okay? So having lived in Salt Lake City, I've met adult converts to LDS. And they will not shut the fuck up about how holy they are. Beck is one of those. And so there's something I do think I, I do think there's something mentally wrong with someone who converts as an adult. Um, and so if this guy really did convert to Islam at the age of 64, six months ago, like ISIS says, then there was something behind it. There was some bitterness or something behind it. It, it would dovetail with the timeline that we're being told. Because keep in mind, um, when, when you're hearing people saying... Oh, he needed some training, and he needed meticulous planning and all that. For what? You want to do a bunch of killing, and you know that bump stocks exist, and they comp you rooms at Mandalay Bay, and you're up at Mandalay Bay Sunday nights, to, you know, every Sunday night two years in a row. You know that there's live concerts down there. And so you want to do a mass killing, what do you do? Uh, gee, I don't know, check calendar, book room. Uh, you know, it's not that fucking hard to plan what this guy did. And you cannot, just because Las Vegas PD is unwilling to admit that this was as simple as it appears, doesn't make it complex. And now they're talking about um, um, an accomplice and all that. Sorry, the guy had the room Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I'm sorry, uh, whatever, 23 guns? Um, I do that in two trips in my car. You know, seriously? So if he had an accomplice, the accomplice was, you know, the fucking bellboy. So, no, I think the guy acted alone. And then the other proof positive is that if you actually uh, listen to the gunfire on in, in recording software like Adobe Audition or Audacity, which is free, uh, A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y, then you yourself can, uh, you can record any of the YouTube videos and you will see in the waveform that there's only one set of pop, 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 pop. And then right behind it might be an echo, but the echoes correspond to every shot fired. So, um, um, so anyway, there's that. Yeah, that latest bit of misinformation that Trump made it easy for mentally ill people to get guns. No, 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 he did not. Um, it, it's just that there are uh, there was there was frankly a unconstitutional hold on people who had not been adjudicated mentally deficient. That if there if there was a um, ongoing finding or whatever, um, and and it was an unconstitutional hold 
uh, and he lifted it. He didn't make it easy for mentally ill people to get guns. But the fact of the matter is, um, your mental health records are, are HIPAA records. They're protected. They're federally protected. And on the ATF form 4473, when you buy a gun, you fill out uh, the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms form 4473. And it's like question number eight, you know, are you a fugitive from justice? Yes, no. Question number nine, have you ever been adjudicated as mentally deficient? Yes, no. Now, look, you can lie on that. Um, there's also um, uh, there's also demographic data that you can lie on. Um, uh, you can lie on your race. Uh, you can be Caucasian, non-Hispanic. You can be Caucasian, Hispanic. You can be Pacific Islander because it says uh, demographic data for informational purposes only. You cannot lie on your middle initial, on your gender or whatever, because when they call in um, that uh, that to the NICS system, the National Instant Check System, when they call West Virginia to uh, to ping you, they say, um, yeah, uh, let's see, William Smith, William R. Smith, um, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, date of birth, 1-23-56, um, male, uh, or if you wrote down female and they say female, then there's going to be a hold on your gun purchase. And you can say, oh, I fucked up. I circled the wrong box or I filled in the wrong bubble, then, then fine. But, um, but anyway, the mental health loop is the big loop, the big loophole in gun purchases. I don't think mentally ill people should drive, um, own a knife, uh, or buy a gun. But mentally ill people have to be defined as something, right? And the ATF defines them as people adjudicated mentally deficient. Well, that takes quite a bit because even Elliot, what's his name, the Santa Barbara killer, um, his mental deficiency was not through a court. It was not adjudicated through a court. But his psychiatrist knew that Elliot should not have been driving a car or owning a gun because Elliot had been on antidepressants um, and other mood, mood altering drugs since he was 12 years old. So he goes up to Santa Barbara. He didn't go to UCSB. He went to uh, City College of Santa Barbara, whatever. And he went off his meds, just like James, what's his name at Aurora, went off his meds. His mommy in San Diego used to give him his meds every morning. She's a nurse. He goes off to University of Denver. And she's not there to hand him his pills. So he stops taking his pills. And then uh, University of Denver kicks him out. And then he does the killing. Adam Lanza, the Sandy Hook killer. Um, he was deeply mentally uh, uh, sick, mentally ill, um, behaviorally ill, uh, a sociopath, unable to connect with human beings and, and not just autistic. He was there was something he was it was psychosis. His mother had him on drugs and she still couldn't control him. She was going to send him to a group home in Olympia, Washington. He caught wind of this. Um, and he killed her and then went to the school that uh, was her greatest joy, where all the normal kids were. So he went off his meds and he went and kid killed a bunch of uh, normal kids. So the mental health component uh, is huge, huge part of this. You know how they have had people without disorders show up to psychologists to see what would happen. And they were diagnosed with all sorts of shit. Two therapists might diagnose some different. No, totally true. The mental health in industry is... Um, is uh, it's like alchemy in the Middle Ages. Uh, they were they, they were as close to chemists as an alchemist um, is to chemistry. I mean, I mean as a psychologist is to, to the truth. But we also are in this period for the past 20 years when um, <clears throat> we've been drugging up our young men. And that's why overwhelmingly the mass killings are young white middle class males because young white people, Put their kids on these drugs. Um, uh, do kids in Compton have access to real assault rifles uh, or, or submachine guns like Uzis, you know, or AKs? Yeah, they do. Well, why aren't they doing mass killings? Why are they doing retaliation killings and not mass killings? Well, because they don't have those behavioral problems. Black people aren't putting their kids on Adderall uh, or Prozac or whatever. Um, and so that's why you, you don't get that. The uh, Virginia Tech killer, the Korean kid, well, he was a middle-class Korean kid, and he was adjudicated mentally deficient, and he did not surrender his firearms. Imagine that, a mentally ill guy who, who ignored a court order. 
Um, so yeah, uh, th there were not mass killings like this 20 years ago. Remember Columbine was 1999. So it's been 18 plus years. And that corresponds to the mid eighties, pardon me, the mid nineties when these kids started get getting put on psychotropic drugs. And so the issue when people, when they do the uh, toxicology on like Elliot, what's his name in Santa Barbara and, uh, and then they come back and go, oh, there was nothing in his system. Well, no shit. That's the issue. There should have been Adderall in his system. There should have been three different things in his system. But he was clean because he stopped taking them. And his brain, when you're 12 years old, your brain is still forming. And so your brain begins making connections on those drugs. You stop taking those drugs and your brain stops connecting things. So um, in, in the case of this guy, um, the, uh, the deal is... Uh, he went on diazepam Valium six months ago, which corresponds to him, whatever, converting to Islam, if you if you believe that. Like I say, that Twitter thread is really interesting. It's informative, but it comes with a big disclaimer that ISIS has misclaimed, has falsely claimed things in the past. Uh, it's just that they've only done it three times out of 50. Um, by the way, the Kim Jong-un clock is available. That's My daughter makes those. My daughter cut out a collage of Kim Jong-un, and she she broke open the clock. And she glued it onto 12 o'clock, 3, 6, and 9, and then on, then made missiles, made missiles for the hands of the clock. So if you saw that, that's, uh, she's, we're selling those for 35 bucks. And you can go to, um, you can go to the uh, Facebook page and see those. It's, uh, it's paypal.me slash darksecretplace slash 35. And uh, we make it, she personalizes it. And um, then she uh, uh, will mail it to you <coughs> in the original box. But uh, anyway, if you want your... All right, I'm back, right? Okay. Here, by the way, here's one of our three roosters. That's, uh, that's El Pollo Loco. Come on, say something. Say something, Lucy. He's not, he's not the main rooster. Um, my main rooster, or as, as we call him, uh, my big white cock, is uh, way over there. This is this is kind of the junior junior cock, El Pollo Loco. My daughter named him El Pollo Loco. The crazy chicken, because he has a really weird uh, look about him. He's got a really weird bunch of colors. Come on. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong. He's still a very impressive cock. But, uh, so anyway, the, um, the Vegas shooter story uh, adds another layer, uh, you know, that initial thing that, oh, this must be ISIS, and it was poo-pooed, uh, but now ISIS claiming it and doubling down, and so don't be surprised if they produce video evidence Ooh, supporting this, um, and, um, and then, uh, like I say, the conspiracies are really wacky. They're really, uh, r really, really um, the, the baseless. And there's just too much countermanding evidence, like the sound. You know, and if you've ever heard an American army squad, an infantry squad in contact with the enemy, and you've, then you've heard a bunch of M16s or M4s going off at once, that's not what multiple multiple shooters don't go. Brrr. Multiple shooters, multiple M4s, um, uh, multiple M4s, uh, uh, bang over each other. You can't make out individual shots. We we had kind of a problem. We had um, our original hand and rooster. We let them. Um, she sat. She brooded on one egg for twenty one days. It hatched, and it turned out to be a male, okay? Um, the other one, El Pollo Loco, he was an accident, too. 
we bought about 22 hens and six of, six of them turned out to be roosters. Pardon me, seven turned out to be roosters. So my daughter and I, my wife waited inside. My daughter and I, my eight-year-old daughter and I, we, we dispatched all six roosters and they're currently sitting in the freezer. Well, only two are left. We are making chili and soup out of them and all that. Because they're a little too, they don't have any fat on them. They're really, really free range. The difference was uh, this guy here, El Pollo Loco, he, he was always very nice. So we, we let him stay alive. Um, we, uh, we, we let him live so far. But he's, he's getting kind of rapey. And that's what roosters do. And so we're, we're, it's not turning out very well. But anyway. So anyway, that is your Thursday live stream about the Vegas shooting. Um, that um, that uh, that uh, um, new development that ISIS continues to claim credit, and in this case, um, uh, giving him a name, Abu Abdul Al Bar Al Amriki, uh, um, the uh, father of Abdul Bar, the American. How he got it up there? I don't know. Have you ever uh, gone to a hotel for three or four days? Um, you know, it's that simple. You check into a room with your initial bunch of, uh, of duffel bags. Uh, he, he, uh, catch up. He was a lone shooter. No help. No multiple shooters. But you check into a hotel, you take your bags up there, um, and you go back down and you make another, make another run. And then it's, um, Saturday. So he checks in on Friday and he does that, goes down on Saturday he could do it in six or seven loads and not raise any suspicion. And why should he? Because why would anyone at the front desk of a hotel be suspicious of a guest bringing more baggage up? Um, that's not suspicious in a hotel. In fact, I think you'll find that's how hotels run traditionally. You check in and then take your shit up to your room. Um, and so... Um, so that's, that's why it would not raise suspicion. And besides, um, the morning shift sees him bring a bunch of stuff up. He knows at noon there's a different desk crew. He goes back down at noon. And it's not like the morning crew says to the afternoon crew, hey, watch out for uh, 3209 because he took a bunch of shit up there this morning, a bunch of baggage. We don't want him staying for three days and dropping a shitload of money. You know, the more he packs in there, the better. So anyway, um. Uh, so yeah, I think he's a lone shooter, did it by himself, but what was his motive? Um, on the, on the surface, the motive was he wanted to pay back Las Vegas for taking all of his money. Um, and in which case, I don't understand why his first target wasn't Jason Aldean. If he wants to mortally wound the tourist industry in Vegas, you, you, it's two things. It's the celebrities and it's the people paying. So he, his target were the people paying. Why not shoot Jason, uh, uh, I mean, Jason Aldean? So um, anyway, there's, uh, there's that setup. I don't know. It would, it, he probably took several hours filling up the 100-round Surefire magazines. His, he probably got hand cramps um, um, filling up those 100-round magazines. I hope he had a speed loader. Um, so um, wait, I'm going to, I have to decline a phone call there we go um so um yeah the setup and all that you know i think people forget he had that room since friday the 29th he was in that room noon friday the 29th possibly even thursday so there he was um thursday saturday sunday so it's sunday night 10 p.m pacific time uh so he's been up there all that time um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the actual performer was, was hidden uh, from his field of view. I'm not, not quite sure. Uh, maybe it was because it doesn't seem um, uh, logical that he would let the performer live. The bum fire kits, go out and fire a magazine. You get used to it, just like automatic fire. And here's the other thing is bump fire is not just a kit. Bump fire is a technique that you kind of discover on semi and you can practice it. You can hold, you can sit there and you can hold an AR-15 kind of loosely. Um, you can clear the pistol grip with your hand like this and you can brace it up against your shoulder. And if you, if you hold up the gun with your trigger finger, um, your trigger finger in the loop up against the trigger, 
and you clear, you don't grip the pistol grip. If you kind of, if you hold it loosely with your, your finger and you pull it back slightly, it'll fire once. And as it bounces back, it'll fire again. As long as you, you don't move your hand and you let the trigger bounce against your trigger finger by keeping it there like that, as long as you go like that, you can bump fire. You don't need that stock. It's very hard to control it. Um, and it's not illegal. The reason it's not illegal is because one trigger pull is firing one round. So it's still semi. That's the theory behind a bump stock. Um, but you have to keep your finger like this and maybe clear your thumb even. Sometimes you can kind of go like that. But you can make the weapon bounce off your shoulder. You can do it with an AK. You can do it with a Mini-14. Uh, it's really easy to do with a Mini-14, by the way. A Mini-14 has does not have a pistol grip. It's extremely easy to do it with uh, with a Mini-14. Um, so um, uh, that is kind of the uh, the issue with the bump stocks. Yeah, binary triggers. I have a match trigger on one of my ARs. I have a 24-inch barrel AR for varminting, and what a match trigger is, is the first trigger pull, um, just in the, uh, the first trigger pull is, is like six to eight pounds of pressure to pull it. It's called a two-stage trigger. And then you can lightly um, pull it a second time on with, and you only have like a half pound or less. You can adjust it. Um, and I have the, the Geisel uh, two-stage triggers that you drop in with a straight trigger. Um, and I use it for varminting because you need a really, really light trigger pull um, for those. Those would not work for bump fire. They do not work for bump fire because you have to go click and then release it and then like that. Um, so anyway, uh, apparently the main weapon was a Daniel Defense uh, AR. And then, of course, he used... Um, I've heard people say Gisela, and I speak German, but um, I, I think a German would say Geisela or Geisela. Doesn't matter anyway. I'll say Gisely. But um, anyway, the, uh, he, then he used the Surefire 100 round magazine, um, and I have a 60. And the 60 round magazine is the same length of a 30. It's just that it's really wide. The 100 is more like a 40-round mag and really wide. And, I mean, you heard, uh, uh, you talk about an endorsement for the Surefire magazine. I, I didn't hear, as I recorded that, he was firing 100-round bursts. I didn't hear any misfires from a bump fire stock, um, probably because of the low uh, cyclic rate. So, anyway. Anyway, very sad event, but uh, it's, um, it's added a new layer now with ISIS releasing that newsletter claiming and going more deeply into their claim that he is a uh, uh, an ISIS sleeper. So um, more on that as events warrant. Thanks for joining us.